can actually drive and talk to you at the same time. Isn't that marvelous? What a novelty this is, Dave. Can actually be able to, oh, sorry, forgotten how to drive on that note. There we go, our resident pair of black-chested snake eagles. Something for some of you to add to your bird list and a pair of eagles that I think we're going to see regularly on our live safaris from the Mara, just because they do live quite close to our camp. Well, not close to our camp, but close to where we come down into the reserve off the mountain. We see them here pretty much every single day as it starts to get dark, and I'm hoping that perhaps they might even choose to nest somewhere around here. They are very striking birds, often confused for sort of new birders, confused with a martial eagle, but they're much, much, much smaller. And if you take a close look at their legs, if you can, you'll notice that there's no feathers all the way down for the f towards the feet. And that immediately distinguishes between a true eagle and the other birds of prey. The martial eagles, African hawk eagles, they'll all have feathers right down to their feet. Brown snake eagles do not. It's the only snake eagle, really, that I've seen here so far. Brown snake eagles are not common at all. You can see the wind is blowing, if you look at their ruffled feathers. It's definitely a chilly evening. Dave and I even had the roof, well not the roof, the roof is on permanently. We nearly had all of our rain covers down. We did actually have most of them down. Tucking in for a big storm. But it seems as though it's blown away. <laughs> Mario, you say they look white-chested. What a silly name the ornithologists have come up with for a bird with a white chest but called a black-chested snake eagle. It's because just in terms of... Uh, bird anatomy in terms of the definition when you when you look through a bird book and you look at the the different descriptions of the area the chest is actually technically really quite brown but let's go with black because that's what they've called it and then the belly is white so the underside is white but the chest part is actually quite dark and if I trouble Dave I don't know how Dave feels about this oh well done thanks Dave I put my bird book away in the f fear that it was going to get soaked in the rain. And there we go. Let me just find you a picture. I take your point, though. They look a lot. They look a lot, as though they've just got white bellies. And there we go. That's what they look like in flight. I haven't had a chance to wash my hands yet today, so you just have to ignore my fingernails. We've been moving campsites, so it's been a little bit busy. There you go. Here's the black-chested snake eagle, and that's the chest part. And Michelle, you say, while well, we look at the dark head and dark chest, you say that they look like a Batman, with the wind ruffling their feathers like that. Absolutely. I wonder how Craig feels about that. Craig, of course, being our camp Batman, I wonder if he feels some kind of sort of, I don't know, connection with these birds. They do. They've got that dark-eyed, Christian Bale-esque expression to them as well, don't they? The stern-eyed, perhaps, would be a better description. Actually, they just look really cold. All fluffed up against the wind. You know, it wouldn't really have been fair, even if the gremlins hadn't attacked us this afternoon, to have challenged Byron and Tristan or even participated in their elephant competition, because essentially everywhere I look today, there are elephants everywhere. And I'm not going to complain about that, because I love sitting with elephants. But they're all around at the moment. It's been an absolute pleasure this afternoon. Everywhere I look, I just see another elephant. I actually came to this area because apparently the rhino were here this morning. There's no sign of them, sadly enough. But we do have our elephants. Oh, somebody's missing a tail. Oh, goodness. <coughs> Excuse me. Somebody's missing a tail, she said in a completely non-squeaky and normal tone of voice. I wonder what happened to you, girl. Could potentially have been a lion or a hyena in this area. But not now. Not recently. This would have happened when she was very young. It could be for other reasons. It might have been an infection, something that severed the sort of the vertebra, the joint, 
at the tail area. But she is most definitely... Oh, and there's the, the elephant with a backwards tusk as well there, Dave. This is the second time I've seen her. I'm sure there's quite a few of them. You see what I mean about seeing a lot of their dynamics? Oh, there goes a running little baby. That's what she was waiting for. Because we've got this open area, especially when they start to talk to each other, with those low rumbles, so often we find them obscured by trees. But out here, you can actually see the effects on the rest of the group. <coughs> and what's more, because you're often in a position where you can see more than one herd, and you're able to gauge the reactions that other elephants have to the conversations of one herd. I found that fascinating. I wouldn't say that I've learnt anything from it yet. I just notice changes in their behaviour. And she's shepherding the little one. They're not quite fang. Not quite the tusk the size of fangs. Backwards facing tusk. But I'm sure we're going to see lots of these elephants out here. Just because we, we're going to see lots of elephants. I wonder, should I move forward a little bit? Oh, I think that's a good idea. I'll just wait for this elephant family to come out in front of us. It would also be quite fascinating to work out which elephants belong to separate herds, because sometimes you see several herds all together. I'd love to know the dynamics behind that as well. Well, oh, that was quite a steep hill, wasn't it, little boy? There you go. Hello, lady. Okay, let's go closer. Fortunately, we've got the very subtle sounds of Pucker to help us sneak up on them. I'm sorry, I'll stop giving you grief. 